Hello guys, good evening, good morning, good afternoon, wherever you are. So we're here today for another episode of Carnival Ramblings. Um, this is a live sort of Q&A that I'm going to be doing. And as you guys in the chat probably already know, I've been doing this quite a while now, maybe a few weeks. I'm looking to keep this up for perhaps, um, ideally at least two sessions per week. Um, potentially going up to around maybe three. Um, the days I want to solidify are Monday and Friday. I may look at also doing Sundays, perhaps, every now and then, maybe Wednesday. But it depends on the week, so I'm not going to promise that. But the, the idea is Monday and Friday, at, um, roughly 7 p.m. British time. I apologize in advance for the, you know, lack of... Do you see what happens here when I'm your hand? I've been messing around my green screen for ages, um, all the settings. I haven't actually moved my green screen. The lighting is exactly the same as it always is. But so, yeah, I'm lost for what's happened there. But you can still see me. See me, you can still hear me because that's the main thing. Um, also, welcome to my castle for those of you that can um, are watching this rather than just listening. Let's get to the chat then to start. Jeremy, you've made it in first. Well done. I know you struggled last time because before you had, um, I think you were waiting, was it quarter two and someone just beat you by about 10 minutes or something? As long as we're here, it's good. Yes, yeah, main thing, Rick. Thanks for coming on. Hell yeah. Jonathan has Popeye forums on title card of this video. Yeah, I'm not sure how it turned out that way because I just, you know, flex my arm in the. I can't see. But like, I just flex my arm in the um, thumbnail, and like the green screen behind me. And it seems to just look that way. I don't know. I'm lost. But yeah, um, I think the angle of it probably affected it as well. Like, you know, when you shoot things at certain angles, you get that um, better point of view, I think. We've got a new member in the chat. That's a big Nev. Nice to see you. Nice to um, nice to have you on board. I don't really have a proper insignia yet or anything that really identifies people that are members of my channel. But I'm going to be collaborating with Bart K tomorrow, so perhaps he might give me one or give me a, a name. Might be the king of whatever the castle is behind me. <laughs> I'm acting as a member, and thank you in, in advance for anyone that should choose to join. Um, a few people have joined my my channel as members, and it's been popping up on my YouTube analytics feed. But I've not actually seen it until I actually go onto it. Sometimes I'll say, "Oh, this person a member." I've seen this person before, so yeah, I don't. It doesn't always come up on the screen when I'm reading through it, but um, this time it has. So thank you very much, speaking of. Have a nice evening and weekend. Yeah, you too. I've got this Friday. Just chatting around here. Hopefully we'll get to some questions soon. I'm just going through the chat. Yeah, Jeremy, I guess you're a bit like me, you're probably not into like mechanics. You probably more into like the gym and nutrition stuff. Um, I'm useless at pretty much everything apart from what I'm an expert in. Well, I say an expert, I'm I'm trained in. I seem to be doing okay. That would have been cool, wouldn't it? It's me. Good evening, fellow cooked meat enjoyers. Yeah, I wonder how long this topic's going to go on for, because I know it's um, wound quite a few people up. But yeah, there's a, there's a thing going on at the moment between um, my friend Bart K and another influencer. And it's all about the raw meat versus cooked meat sort of fiasco and what's better for you and... You know, I don't know. It, it's, it's quite um, it's quite exhausting, but I think Bart's probably put the whole thing to bed now. I hope. Hopefully, that's the end of it. The green screen idea, yeah. So, if I didn't have the green screen behind me, you'd be looking at a few pictures above me of like bodybuilders and stuff, which you might not be interested in. You'd also be looking at a few cutouts of flowers. So, when I'm trying to promote myself as like a carnival bodybuilder fitness nutrition guy it doesn't sort of sit too well but um 
what I've gone for today was is the um, the old English sort of theme. I think it looks quite. I spent a few hours doing. It, let's just say that. <laughs> but um, I've got some pebbled paving around me. Um, a fort behind me with a moat, and my emblem, and my website. I tried to keep the theme anyway. Hello guys. Sorry about that. So that's what happens when you're trying to do anything with secondhand equipment because you can't afford anything better. Uh, my apologies for that. Um, so basically what happened was my screen froze, my computer froze, had to restart it all. So yeah, it's a bit frustrating, but apologies for that. Um, we've not lost too many people, so thank you for sticking around. I'll get back to where I was in the chat anyway. Hello, Sophie. Nice to see you here. How's it going? Hi, Michelle. Nice to see you. I hope you're still here after that um, issue I had with the computer. I hope my email early was well received. I wasn't expecting a reply, by the way. Um, 
But yeah, I just want to check you've received it, and that's all. What's a good question? Composition consultant, what life advice would you give a 16 year old Jonathan? Um, that's, that's a really good question. I guess it comes down to if I could go back in time and, you know, be a, a figure or an idol of younger Jonathan and I could influence him, what would I say to him? Um, if I'm honest, I'd say force the doctor's hands to give you a proper spine scan. Um, I think that would have really changed my life. I think I'd be in a better position now than um, I would otherwise. Uh, outside of that, I probably would have pursued my athletic career in sprinting. Um, I think I would have been much more elite at that in terms of like, in terms of rankings than my bodybuilding sort of status. I've achieved some things, but I think, you know, out of a thousand given people, I'd, I'd have achieved higher up the ranks in sprinting and athleticism. That's a good question. Thank you. Background reminds me of Stephen Van Meter, Meter, the Bond King. I've not seen that. Oh, what happened? <laughs> Yeah, no, it's the, um, the computer wasn't working for a while. It's, I'm using a basically I'm using a laptop that I could afford at the time. That it's all right. It's quite high spec, but it's secondhand, so um, the memory in it's not good. The webcam on it isn't good. The microphone on it isn't good. So I've had to buy everything else to add on to my setup. Um, so that's cost money in itself. So I've spent a fair bit of money to try and create these YouTube videos. Not a huge amount, but it may, it, for me, relatively, it's quite a lot of money. If anyone's got any questions, please just send them through. Brilliant, Sophie. How was it? I know you had ribs. Um, what did Tilly have? I'm guessing Maddie just had milk or something. What do you use, Rick? Send me a picture or something sometime. I'd be quite interested to see. I've seen your, I think it's your garage or something, or maybe your, your back room. But yeah, you, you seem like a very, um, reminds me actually of my granddad's uh, garage when he was in Cyprus. And he would basically store things in there. Then he'd be fixing things, changing things around. He had a lot of stuff around. Um, but I think yours is probably a bit more organized when I think about it. My laptop is from the dump. I fixed it though. Oh, well, I'm, yeah, I'm not really capable of fixing anything. I think it's just the, the the hardware itself isn't that that great. But you know, what can you do? Any tips for dealing with sugar cravings on carnival? That's a good question. Um I'm looking more and more at this now, um, in terms of people that can't do the carnival diet because they have an issue starting it because Outside of like the ethical issues or whatever they think that might exist, it seems to be they just can't give up the sugar. So that's um, a really good question to bring across. I think one method you can use or people should use is, this at least in the short term, to avoid being around people that are toxic and unhealthy. So people that are trying to justify you eating um, bad foods. Well, you know, it's just just once, just once. The amount I've heard of at the time I've heard, oh, it's just once ends up being a lot more. What I've noticed in my bodybuilding competitions, when I'm actually competing and trying to, you know, get in shape, I suddenly get invited to more things. Um, I'm per I perceive it that way anyway, and it makes the whole ordeal more stressful because, you know, it's never just one meal out a week, ends up being a few, then you sort of detour what you're trying to do. And people don't respect you for your goals, and they think that it's more important that what they're trying to do. They think that's more important that you participate in what they're trying to do even though you're happy to just sit there and drink a Diet Coke or something, but I don't know. I'm outside of that. I think, I think if you don't give yourself a reason to feel hungry and try and get rid of that kind of, I need to eat every two hours kind of thing that us bodybuilders tend to get into. Um, and I think eating enough fat is probably quite important. I'd probably, probably for most people, um, once you've obviously 
get, got rid of all the sugary foods and junk, if you start to increase the fat incrementally alongside that sugar carb drop, I think that's probably going to be a good way of going about it because you're not going to have the energy drop because, you know, people start the, the carnival diet or a ketogenic diet, they're not eating less food because their appetite is a bit less. Uh, they run more on ketones and that has appetite suppressant properties, it seems. So that's kind of how I'd go about it. Uh, if you've got any more questions about that, you want me to elaborate at all, just let me know. I had sauces, ribs and two eggs. Tilly had a burger, no bun. Some of my ribs and corn. Maddie had some milk. Mm, sounds about right. <laughs> yeah, Tilly likes the corn. I think because I think it has that like buttery kind of taste that people like. Um, I'm not really, I don't know, I'm not really for it. I don't even digest it, so I don't see the point of eating it. But I can see how it's nice with some butter. But that's It's one of those things, it's like a delivery system for butter, really, so... Do you have any non-scale victories recently? Um, thinking about it. That's a good question. I think perhaps my skin has got better recently, like around my wrists. Um, you won't be able to see it really, but well, I've got quite a skinny wrist, obviously, but but yeah, um, my skin isn't as red and sore as what it was. Um, the moment I start washing my hands int intensively and having, you know, showers and a lot of baths and things, my skin goes dry immediately. Now, it doesn't seem natural to me that would happen. And I shouldn't be having to use creams and, um, you know, sort of emollients and lotions and stuff, moisturizing things to add moisture to my skin. My skin should do that itself. So it makes me think that maybe... I'm not meant to be scrubbing myself dry with all these things every every day or something. It doesn't seem, seem to make sense to me. Um, so, yeah, my skin's got a bit better. Um, I'll probably bring up some things that have been negative recently. Um, so I've lowered my fat a little bit. I'm probably like, I've been quite high fat before, but I've gone down to around 180 to 200 grams of fat at the moment. Um, it seems to me where I'm at now with my current protein intake, being about 250 grams um, my carb is about 30 and I drink a lot of milk and dairy and eggs and lots of things so I think that I honestly think that I need to increase my fat um, that might mean I'm not going to get shredded before summer but to feel a bit better I think I'm gonna have to up my fat a bit and my sleep hasn't been as well I've been more anxious recently um, Granted, it's because of technical difficulties and having to stare at a screen the whole time. Um, I am wearing blue blocking glasses and these glasses as well throughout the day as much as humanly possible. Um, went out in the sunset, which is quite nice. I'm, I'm rambling a bit, but I went out on the sun today and did some grounding for about 20 minutes, half an hour. Um, I quite enjoyed that and I felt a bit better afterwards. But yeah, it's UK weather. You can't do a lot out there. I think it's a bit, a bit grim, but onwards and upwards. I agree, Jonathan. Definitely surround yourself with supportive people, Jerome. Get on Facebook groups for guidance and support as well. Yeah, that's brilliant. Um, and on that note, which I don't know why I didn't mention earlier, um, someone called Pim Johnson, so that's the wife, well, not the wife, sorry, I always say the wife, the partner of Bart K. And she is definitely an expert in carb cravings and managing them, getting rid of food addiction, sugar addiction particularly. Um, she has some great methods to do that. And bear in mind, she's worked with lots of people. So if you set, say your experiences, you can always find out how you're going to deal with each sort of experience. So you'll post on her group, oh, this happens today. And she'll give you some advice and some like guides of how to deal with that sort of situation. Um, ultimately, we're dealing with a world which is focused intentionally on making us ill. Um, it sounds grim, but that is the truth. So... We want to combat that, and the best way we're going to do that is with a supportive group and using our own minds and willpower to beat that. Ben, nice to see you. Hello, Jonathan. I asked Harry this question, and he referred me to you. Can you get to a point with... I remember this, because I was on that live stream as well. Can you get to a point with metabolic water where drinking water during gym session is not necessary? Um, I'm going to say probably not. Uh, I mean, it, it depends. So... Say, say, Ben, for example, you're 
um, a five foot, say an average male, five foot 10, and say you weigh, I don't know, 80 kilos. So you're athletic, uh, slim, you know, quite a normal bloke. If you just ate kilos and kilos of, I don't know, beef fat or something, um, yeah, because you'd produce enough metabolic water as long as you built that up slowly. Um, I think the the training requirements for extra hydration are there. Um, and when I say that, I don't mean that you're going to have to drink during the gym session a lot. But I mean your hydration as a whole, so being fat adapted, having enough minerals in your system at one time, drinking with minerals in your system. So that means you're not doing, for example, a 24-hour fast, then drinking loads of water without minerals in it. Um, you probably can do that, but long term you're going to deplete yourself because you're going to stimulate di diuresis and you're not going to put in the stuff that you need. Um, so I think that's probably not the best way to go about it. Um, all in all, I, I say it's probably not going to be possible for most people. There will be some people out there probably, you know, just eat butter, but I don't know. Um, so you, you know, like extra fat and they produce metabolic water, but I don't think that's possible. Um, for a point of reference, um, my fat-free mass is about 88 kilos at the moment. I drink roughly two kilos of water, sorry, two liters of water per day, um, give or take maybe half a liter or something. And that's pretty routinely. Um, now, when I increase my protein intake, but lower my fats, that's usually with the aim of losing body fat. Um, my first goes up. So if your protein's too high, it will, in my opinion and my experience, and virtually everyone I've spoken to that does bodybuilding, um, they'll say, you know, protein goes up, you become more thirsty, you drink more, you lose more minerals. Um, then you've got to top up more of electrolytes and all sort of thing. But I think just drinking to first, salting to taste is the best way to go about it. But I hope that I'll answer your question. And um, if you want any more detail on any of that point, I just may just ask me and I'll be happy to help you out if I can. Something I'd like to know is if you are aware of any people other than me who have built an aversion to sweet things. Um, not really. No one that's really stated it. But I think it's more of like a residual thing that you, you take on as time goes on. So I don't think it's necessarily something that just happens to you. Um, I'll say for myself, when I walk through the supermarket sometimes, if I go there, I walk past the fruit aisle and it seems weird. Like I can smell almost like the, the chemicals, like on the fruit and all those sort of things. Um, now, we Sophie and I, if we go shopping, we don't tend to walk down most aisles because there's not much on most aisles we would ever buy. Outside of like Lou Roll, animal foods, milk, things like that, um, toiletries, whatever. So yeah, there's not really a really an issue I have um sometimes I think for me like the sweet tastes I like they're not so much the the taste that I like itself but it's more how I how I associate it so I might think um I, I like maybe ice cream or something but that remind me of when I spent a lot of time with my nan when I was younger so I think there's a nostalgic kind of element to it as well and that's that's for me at least but um Sometimes I might have a coffee with some sugar-free sweeteners in it. Um, might use some cream or some milk or something, and that's quite nice. But I think when you get a bit much, you can taste it, and your taste buds for sweet become overpowering, and not in a nice way. So, yeah, that's that's kind of what I think about it all. Pim is highly recommended, yes. If anyone's got any more questions, Jerome, if you're still here, um, please chime in. Hi, Jonathan. Do you believe... Oh, hi, Carl. Um, do you believe we should supplement iodine on the carnival diet? Probably not. Um, I'm aware of some people that do it. Um, for some reason, they tend to only be females. And at, I'll say this. This is my own opinion. This is like what I see like what, from what I, when I speak to people. I've not met a single man that supplements with iodine. Um, so it seems to be a female health thing. And whether or not that's because of the recent people and videos that come out and said, you know, I take this, that, and the other. Um, they say, oh, I take four drops of this and two drops of that and whatever it is. I think it does have a practical use if you are deficient. So you've got to kind of prove to someone that you are deficient. Um, I think that you can acquire all the iodine you need through a carnivore diet. And I know there is some... Um, 
this is something that's out of my depth, so I won't comment on it. But I'll say that people do use iodine at high doses to put very serious illnesses into remission. So without using certain words. So that's kind of how I look at it. Um, for example, if you look at a glass of milk and you look at, I don't know, um, a filet of salmon or some mackerel, that's probably going to give you all the iodine you'd need in a given day and then some. So you're not looking at really adding a lot to your diet. And I think iodine deficiencies are seem to be quite common for some people, but you've got to bear in mind your uptake will be different if you're on um, a standard Western diet versus a carnivore diet. I've noticed this with other vitamins and minerals myself. Like I used, I still use it, but I use chronometer and my chronometer, the app will say, you know, you can reach this percentage or that. And I've actually fine tuned each one of those. And I've roughly worked out in terms of minerals, at least where I land. Um, and that that's in regards to things like calcium, potassium, and sodium, which is wherever it depends what my output is that day. But I've sussed a few of those things out and it seems like we don't need as much as what um, the guidelines say. So there we go. Um, also on that point about chronometer that I was just mentioning, I have a video out with someone called Mark Strauf, um soon. I think that is on the 1st of February. Might be wrong. Um, but we talk about chronometer and supplements and I think you might find that video useful to watch because his insights are into it are very sensible and they kind of align closely with what I'd say. So I'd suggest you watch that video and maybe put a notification on to watch that one when it comes out. But thank you for your question. Hello, Hard Logic. Nice to see you. Question. Any idea how far apart from a workout should a cold shower be to not stunt stunt muscle pl blah, blah, blah. muscle protein synthesis? I've read somewhere at least four hours. Now, are you talking about after or before? Um, in my opinion, someone should train when they're warm. I think that's probably the best protocol. Now, some people train with a cold, which doesn't make sense to me. Um, it won't enhance your blood flow, and it will probably be an extra stress that you probably don't need to put in your body. Um, I, think, I think, based on my opinion, that... You should be warm before the workout and after the workout. That period of time, I couldn't really say. Um, I guess it depends how quickly your body temperature gets back to normal. So if you're able to do a cold shower first thing in the morning and train, you know, say 8, eight o'clock, and train at, I don't know, um, 12 midday, your body temperature is fine and you have no issues and you're moving fine, you've got no issues with performance, I think you'll be fine there. I don't think... It's going to be a big thing in terms of stunting muscle protein synthesis. Your body's ultimately going to adapt to whatever you throw at it as well as it can. So I think if it was going to be an issue, you'd get strong signals from your body deterring you from doing um, cold showers and things. So I hope that answers your question. I know it's a bit of a yeah, but kind of answer, but I've kind of, I've kind of tried to expand upon that point. So it gives you an idea of what I'd, what I'd personally do. Do you listen to music while you lift or recommend listening to music? That's a good question. So I'm someone that does suffer immensely with sensory issues um, in that if I'm doing too much or I'm around a lot of people or there's lots of visual stuff going on around me, I don't like it. And it, it makes me go into my shell sort of thing, makes me anxious, and it puts me in a state which I don't want to be in or would not choose to be in. Now, I think that some music is useful. Um, it depends what I'm doing. So if I'm, well, if, if I was walking to the gym, as in walking maybe half an hour up the road to the gym, you know, the public gym, and was looking to sort of have a good leg workout and had the energy, you know, I'd listen to something a bit more upbeat. Um, it could be anything. It could be maybe rap, if there's like a motivational sort of rap song with good lyrics. Um, it could be rock. I'm, I'm a big fan of 80s rock. Um, but when I'm training, I tend to listen to very subtle music. And that means, imagine like the most epic song you could think of. Like that's what I'm listening to when I'm training. I'm thinking about precise movements, exact training stimuluses. Um, I'm not looking to swing things around. Everything has to be controlled. And when I say control, I don't mean control to the point of like, um, what's the word? I can't remember the word. 
lackadaisical or whatever the word is I, i'm not sort of like doing it and thinking oh yeah, da, da. no I, I'm, I'm controlled i'm focused i'm lifting as hard as i can you know with the assumption i can actually train that body part intensely that i, that I want to um after the gym i do trend, tend to not listen to any music just be alone with my thoughts um probably focus on my breathing it might be that i'm sat outside the gym for 10 minutes it might be that i'm walking home that time is very empty very void um I try not to do much of anything. I just want my body to calm down because I don't want my body to be in a state that's been stressed out and put more stress in it. Um, training is, you know, Jerome, the way we do it, it's, um, it's not something you want to sort of continue throughout your day, you know, that stress response. So I'm a very firm believer in recovering and using music and other modalities to improve that recovering um, or the lack of. Question. I noticed in your grocery video you bought some Aberdeen Angus burgers. How do they compare to other beef? There's a farm nearby that sells that breed, so I'm wanting to try. That's interesting. Um, I can't quite remember where you're based, but I notice a taste that they are more... Mm, I don't know if it makes sense, but more grassy. I don't know. Um, when I say grassy, I mean it tastes like eating like cabbage or something. But I think anyone that you know, it has like it's like comparing raw milk to um pasteurized milk. If you've had either of those, you'll you'll notice there's a subtle, subtle difference. Um, same thing with free range or you know organic eggs versus barn or caged eggs. Um, I think it's the same kind of differential. I find that I find that it's a certain level of burger that I like from the supermarket. Um, when I say that, I'm a bit. Um, I, I'm sensible of money, but I do tend to buy things that I like um, that is within a reasonable price budget. And you might find that you can find these things affordable. So, yeah, I quite like the taste. And I think it it is worth it if you want to try it. But if you don't notice the difference, then I wouldn't waste your time. It's not a big deal, really. No worries, Scott. I'm glad to be of help. After. Yeah, sorry, I'm not very good at scrolling this chat, as you can tell. But yeah, after, um, I probably wouldn't do it after training i think you're just prolonging the stress response um i th I, I personally wouldn't do it um, i don't think it's going to enhance blood flow for example like um you know if you get out of the shower and you're freezing cold and you walk outside sort of thing if you if you did that sort of thing you're not feeling good your blood flow isn't stimulated um so i'm not much of a fan of it Tracy, hello, nice to see you. How you doing? Got any questions? Just ask below. All right, sounds sensible. Thanks. Yeah, no worries. Um, I understand there's a lot out there now about like hormetic stressors and things, but you got to think how natural is it to train in a gym? <laughs> you know, it's um, quite a big stress, and you're especially if you're trying to push those upper limits of muscle mass, you're not going to really evade a high stress response so that's what people like myself and bart k um talk about the significance of recovery and being sensible and listening to your body um it may be that you already do that and you don't notice the difference so you know it's um quite an individual thing but i would personally probably not do it and probably not recommend you do it i like listen to elevates music when working that's interesting. I guess it's quite a steady beat with no sort of extreme swings or anything. So you can see how, how that's good for concentrating, perhaps. Can you explain hyperplasia, please? Yes, I can try to. So you have muscle fiber. This is probably quite a tricky one. This is going back to um, close to 10 years ago. That I was reading on this. Um, just spindles of muscle fibers. They are activated by... A motor neuron unit thing um, they activate activate as individual units um, so you notice for example if you flex your quad and unflex it you might get muscle fibers run up and down and there'll be like piano wires sort of thing if you're in relatively like lean sort of shape um, now what happens with hyperplasia is you get more of those individual fibers um, replicating themselves so it's quite a tough thing to do. So usually if you're doing this, you're going to be doing it through lower reps. Usually um, it's when you can't, 
it's it's when you're basically trying to build up muscle fiber um more muscle what's the word muscle spindle density you're trying to get more things in one space um and usually in turn people want to inflate those by doing hypertrophy training so that's probably where that lies um i don't think you can really well essentially i don't think you can really specialize in different muscle fiber types that much um you, you can to an extent but when you're doing any kind of bodybuilding training you're your muscle fibers can be activating from slow to fast so you're looking at training in a way that's going to hit all of them at once um you can do it probably the quickest way with well it's probably any repetition range um but i think there is an element of getting enough time and tension in in order to get the metabolic fatigue those sort of bit that sort of build up um probably not explaining this very well but yeah hyperplasia just more muscle um, individual fibers in a given space um, that make your muscles expand but then people do hypertrophy training to make those muscle fibers larger like volumize but i think when you when you i think people talk about the nitty-gritty of these sort of things like you know um this repetition range and this that and the other at the end of the day it just comes down to are you training very hard to the point where your muscle fibers are shaking um and i want to say i mean in a safe way you know you're not like Got got something out of your throat, sort of thing, or and think bizarre. Um, and I understand people will worry a lot about the nuance of things and all the times and the individual reps. Like, what's the difference between six and seven reps and this sort of thing? Um, you just got to train hard, hard, and find a a range that seems to work for you that lets lets you actually activate those muscle fibers maximally. So, um, we're actually speaking about this um, with Mark Strauff the other day. Um, that video will probably won't air till around about maybe the 10th of February. We talk about this sort of thing. Um, yeah, I want to do more about training at some point, but my theory is find a repetition range that you can train safely in, providing it isn't like one or like 50. It's going to be somewhere in the middle. Um, I probably wouldn't go into too much detail about hitting exact numbers. I mean, most people fail because they're just doing sets of 8, 12, 15, 20. What about 9? What about 13? What about 16? What about 21? What about all the numbers in between that? Um, yeah, I'm, I'm rambling. and I know you're not you're not asking this sort of question, but I, I like to give an idea of context of what I think is important. And I think a lot of people worry too much about the, the nitty gritty stuff. Um, question, do you recommend cold showers for any reason? Apologies if you answered this already. Um, to my understanding, it can help people sleep better because it will lower your core body temperature and you never want to go to sleep when you're boiling hot because boiling hot signifies you're active. So it sends us a message to your brain saying, you know, don't sleep, you're active, you're active. Um, your body is a dynamic biological machine and it's going to adapt and deal with the stresses that you put on it if you put on it too many stresses at once it may not deal with it effectively um i know a lot of people that do cold showers and perhaps they do it in the morning because they find it helps wake them up um which it probably does granted but i don't know many people that can deal with the additional stress in their life right now um they're chronically dieting you know they're always under eating sort of thing they're doing cardio or you know long distance runs um, they're chronically stressed. They're asking questions, getting worried about cold showers being detrimental. Um, I think if you're someone that worries about these things and doing it and you're not sure, probably don't do it. And I know people will say it's a bit like, yeah, you're making that sort of assumption, but mm, I don't know. I don't think it's that practical or useful for most people. Um, but I know, I say on that hand, I do know people that do it every single morning. And they find it helps them out for the day. So you might be one of those people, I don't know. But I think for a lot of people, it probably isn't that useful. Hello, Chris. Nice to see you. Hi, does red light therapy help with recovery? I find it hard to stop myself from working out every day. And I had issues with high cortisol. You're very much interested in light, aren't you? Um, I don't mean that in a negative way. I just noticed yourself um, on lots of different live streams and Q&As you ask questions about light a lot which is quite interesting because oh, sorry a lot of people forget about that sort of thing um a 
I think it does aid it, but I think if you're someone that can't stop working out and you've got ants in your pants kind of thing, I think you need to find something that you can do which is sedentary that chills you out. Um, and if having red light therapy means you're relaxed and you're chilled and you're getting your body into that um, that state where you're relaxing, you're not sort of um, worrying about anything or your, your body's not worrying about anything as well. Um, there is a physiological response to worry. Um, yeah, you know, I think you'd be fine. Um, I mean, my mum does different therapies with different lights and things um, from home, and she finds them useful. I think there is a benefit to it. Um, I, ideally, most of the things that are best in life, the you know, the best sort of like sort you out kind of. There's a word for it. Like the best biohacks are free. Um, I think if you're someone that you know you live in a dark, gloomy part of the world, you've got no light, you've got the sun doesn't really shine, you're not getting any sort of UV exposure, then yeah, you know, a red light will be useful. I don't know if it's going to be the be all and end all. Um, it may help your recovery if you're someone that needs it, as you're not getting those other things I just mentioned. So that's kind of my opinion on it, on it anyway. What do you think about infrared sorts? Or... Yes, yeah, so another light question really. Um, I think it's quite good if you can access it and it's useful. Um, kind of goes against what my point was before, but I think I, I've spoken with enough people now that have saunas regularly after a couple of training sessions, and they find it really beneficial. They say, you know, I've been to the gym, I've had my my sort of warm therapy, and I feel better. Um, it puts you in that sort of calm, sedentary state, and I think a lot of people are overstressed. So I think I'm a, I'm a fan of infrared sa saunas. Um, I think people should should use them if they have a reason that warrants using them and they find a benefit from it. So yeah, go for it. Um, I have a few clients that use them quite often. They they um, swear by it, so I don't think it's going to be a problem. Um, just if you are doing anything hot, just hydrate sufficiently so you're not um, chronically dehydrated. Um, that doesn't mean swig like a gallon of water after you do it, but means have a few sips, you know, quench your first. Oh, I'm not hungry now. I'm not thirsty, sorry. Um, then don't drink anymore, but just drink when you're thirsty. So that's one thing I think people can have issues with, and it means they um, dehydrate themselves even faster because they don't put anything in. So, yeah, I hope that makes sense. Patricia, nice to see you. Car have easy. Yeah. Oh, sorry. I don't know why I said you're signing them. These live sessions are great. I need to make sure I attend more. Yeah, they, I actually quite enjoy doing these. Um, I, I regularly get about 15 people on there, sometimes a bit more. Um, and people seem to like them. Now, bear in mind, not everything I say people agree with, but what I'm saying in a lot of cases is my opinion. Um, you know, when you speak to a lot of people and you've been in the field for a long time, well, I say a long time. I've been, I mean, I've been training for 14, 15 years at this point. I tried everything under the sun you can imagine. Um, so you get a rough idea of what does and doesn't work, and you speak to enough people and you kind of come to your own assumptions but you can't always you can't always have the right answer so at some point i will be wrong and i probably have been wrong but that's fine and people will be sure to tell me about it when i am so i don't have a problem with that question i think extra stress from work has made my recovery slower is that a frequent enough thing for me just to 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 just switch to doing full body twice a week instead of thrice a week. Yeah, probably. I mean, look at look at your own individual subjective measures of stress. Is your heart rate chronically up? Is your appetite going up? Are you lacking sleep? Are you sleeping inappropriately? Is your sleep going is your skin going dry? Are you having excess thirst, excess hunger? Um I'm trying to think what else now. Are you becoming more irritable? That's something people don't talk about, but I think it's quite important. Um, but yeah, I mean, as long as those two full body sessions a week are hard work, yeah, go for it. I think, you know, these sort of things are very sort of like, yeah, but sort of thing. But um, I think you're doing two sessions a week, if, you, if that's what you're going to be doing, fine. It might be that you do two, ses two sessions per week for the next two weeks. Think about it logically, you've only cut your volume down by about a third, so it's not going to be a big deal. You're not going to be smaller, and you're probably going to elevate your outcomes better because you'll get yourself out of that pit. So I, you'll notice in 
most of my opinions and things, I am focused so much on recovery because the amount of times I've dug myself into that pit and got had to get back out. Um, I know how it feels. It's, it's, it's hard work. So I'm, I'm very hyper-focused on recovery. So that's my own little, little um, piece on that. That message came through twice. Hello. Rick said, is it, is it normal people to get started slowly upon waking up? Everyone I work with seems to be unable to do much right after waking up. I have to wait until they have their coffee. Isn't it? Yeah, that's a good question. I don't think it's normal. And I think it's something that we have become attuned to. So if we think about how the average Westerner, maybe, uh, maybe other places were, how they get up in the morning, you know, they have their TV in front of them at the end of their bed with the radio next to them, they've got their phone in their hands, iPads, iPods, i things, all these things, gadgets. They have their earphones in, they have a, the light on usually. All these, like, stimuluses. But they can't get out of bed. And it doesn't help because they have all these things to keep them occupied, so they're not physically active and moving. Um, you know, your cortisol res level will rise naturally in the morning anyway. And that's your body saying, right, lazy bones, all right, Rick, get up. You know, it's time to wake up now and get your next kill. Or in our case, going down the the shops and buying some beef or something, or maybe um, for you it might be hunting a duck or finding an iguana in the lake or whatever it is. So um, I don't think it's normal. I think that I think there's a lot we can do to get rid of that whole thing. Uh, myself, so I've suffered with chronic fatigue since I was 14 years old. And this has at times been crippling to the point where I'll be in bed for up to 18 hours per day. And it was horrific. Um, I'm no longer doing that. Although I do sometimes spend more time in bed because I'm sort of doing stuff on the laptop, um, speaking to clients maybe, or doing anything like that, or making YouTube videos maybe. Um, I do find that I am more alert when I wake up now. So I wake up and usually within about five minutes, I'm up sort of you know, having a drink or something, or I go to the toilet and I start my day. Uh, I, that's usually the time where I check my emails and sort of get moving. But when I'm up, I'm awake, I'm active, my my mind's active, I'm ready to go. I don't need a coffee in the morning. I don't need, you know, I can just get on with it. But that's been a very pleasant um, life change that I've had. And I think for me, if I was to wake up like that every morning, which I have been for quite a quite decent while now, I'd take that over any bowl of pasta, pizza, um, packet of sweets, chocolate, any day or anything like that, you know, so... It's quality of life we're talking about here, and I think that needs, well, it deserves a lot more mention. I think quality of life is something that people don't really, I think people don't weigh up well or don't quite understand the significance of, maybe. I'm not sure. Thank you, Carissa. I'm glad you had a good question. Pacello, nice to see you. Thanks for recommending Harry. I learned a lot from, from him. He talks a lot about touring. Do you take it too? I just started because I have sleep issues, low stomach acid and other stuff. Oh, let's have a look. Yeah, so here's some of the bags I've got. You can't see because the green screen, but yeah, I've got bags and bags of stuff. Um, yeah, I do take taurine. I'm probably using about ten grams a day at the moment. And um, bear in mind, my body weight's higher than most people, so I'm going to be using more. Um, I do notice a benefit from it. It has improved my gut function. Seems to improve my sleep somewhat. Um, I noticed that my training performance in the gym is a bit better. Um, not necessarily if I just take it before the gym, but if I just take it on a given day, my training performance is a bit better. What I'm currently doing is about five grams in the morning, but maybe two hours before my workout, something like that, um, and about five grams before bed. So that's in my sugar-free squash here. That's five grams of that in there. Um, I drink that, and that's that's me done. Um, just be careful if you have any issues with blood pressure to look at that carefully and start at a low dose. So that's why it would disclaimer. So you don't take it and you get a doubling up effect of medications. Um, I don't know if you take blood pressure medications, but that's something to be wary of. And yeah, you'll find it does improve a lot of things. Um, Harry rightly says, if you watch any of his live streams, like more often, um, when you look at most cells of the body, they have what's called a tort receptor. That simply means a taurine receptor. Now, if taurine was not a significant um, amino acid, it's a sulfonic acid essentially in the body, 
it's a bit of you know it's 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 a it's quite a complex little thing but it does a lot of stuff in the body essentially so it's going to be very key towards your health outcomes um and you'll get to a point eventually where you don't have to take it anymore i think it's something you can use on and off periodically i think your need for it might go up sometimes it might go down but it's very useful and it's probably one of the best things you can use for your money in terms of per gram per dollar british pound wherever you were from so yeah i i I do take it and I do recommend it for a lot of people. It's in most of my clients' plans. Want to sauna, move to Florida and live without air conditioning. Yeah, I'd, I'd rather not. It's not for me. I don't like heat. My room right now is probably like 10 degrees Celsius and I quite like it. Um, hi, Jonathan, everyone. No questions for today. No worries, Jeremy. If you want to stay in the chat and just listen to what um, people ask and what I've got to say, that'd be cool too. I'm glad you're here and it's nice to see you. Are you attending the Keto Festival in Bristol? Yeah, so my brother actually sent me the link for that um, recently. I think it's in March. And I was looking at it and I was thinking, all right, is it a Keto Festival? You got fat bars, some like, uh, is it broth company or something? I don't know. Um, a few like keto sauces, cooking things, companies. Um, I'm not really sure. Sophie and I might be up for it, but. I think it's because I've been to all these exhibitions before, like all these different sort of fitness conventions. I find often they're quite underwhelming and you sort of walk around it. It's just a load of people selling stuff. Here, try this like five gram sample of some nut butter. I'm like, well, no thanks, don't eat that sort of thing. But, um, you know, I, th I've, I probably wouldn't go. Um, but if I do go, I'd, I'd let you guys know on the live streams and... Yeah, I'd let you know because it'd be nice to meet up, meet up with some of you guys. And I'm actually meeting up with a few people in the coming months, which I'm really looking forward to. It's nice to connect with people that you um you associate with online. So I'm looking forward to that. Yeah, that'd be cool. Can you imagine me just rocking up in like a, a gold gym t shirt or something? Like a, like a vest. <laughs> like those are fake tan or something. It'd be hilarious. Cheers, hard logic. Thank you, Pachello. If you've got any more questions, please just ask. Me and the two kids have take touring. Yeah, so there's scale, just a point to mention, there's scalability with the touring. So if you're little, a little person, you use a tiny bit. If you're a bigger person, you use more. I mean, it does work out that way. It's not like a one size fits all thing. So be very careful with the doctors there. Um, but yeah, I think it is, it's something very underrated. And um, bodybuilders have been using it for probably one, two, maybe three decades now. Um, but it's kind of been a bit hidden. Like it's in pre-workout sometimes and it's something other, but it's not really the the key sort of component. You know, it's not advertised that way, at least anyway, which is a shame because it's um, a very useful compound. Carl said, I asked about EAs in one of your live sessions and you advised me they're a waste of time. I also have body weight bodybuilding that's bw's bodybuilding warehouse pure beef protein isolate are you of the same opinion with this i've actually got that as well i think um the one i've got's orange i don't know if that's what you've got i think it's like a paleo it's just beef protein with sugar-free sweetener and it's like orange flavor um i don't know if that's the same thing but i think it's fine it's a complete amino acid source um i from from memory i think you can't have dairy so it can be better than having whey, like evidently. Um, I think if you're someone that's just trying to pack on weight, you know, get something in as fast as you can multiple times a day. Yeah, have one of them, have a scoop of butter of it or something. It'll be quite good. Um, I don't see it being an issue. Obviously, these things have like sweeteners and stuff, but if you're like relatively fit and healthy, um, you probably won't notice a detriment from it. Ultimately, you know, we all aspire to just eat beef and eat eggs and drink milk and have cheese and fish and stuff. But, you know, most of us aren't completely strict on the carnivore diet. I tell you now, most of us aren't. I mean, I'm, you know, I'm very open about my, um, I have full disclosure of what I do. I have one off meal per month, maybe two, but it's been one for the last probably six, seven months. Um, and that is with family and that might be a burger with a few fries i'll say you know the average average size portion of fries um so it's not 
it's not going to break the bank and i do have a bigger mass so i do get through that junk quite quickly um so yeah that's that's a carnival rambling session for you there um yep jerome are blah, blah, blah. jerome asked are any hobbies or interests outside of health and fitness yes i really like films when i can get the energy to watch them um i tend to listen to a lot of films nowadays um so i try to listen find films i can listen to um i was watching something earlier with i can't even think now um mine's gone blank but it's one of the overweight guys one of the slimmer guys um and they went to i think it's a rock or something they're like gun runners uh, war dogs i said that's quite a funny film to listen to but um yeah outside of that i like some music sometimes I like um one of my goals soon within the next few weeks is to start walking the dog um i've got a labradoodle i think you've seen him before um my goal is to walk him at some point that's something i really enjoy doing um i try and well i, I would be doing that about once a day but for about half an hour but outside of that i quite like meals at family one of my favorite things to do is spend time with family and um meet up my brother do things together with him um we've got quite a lot of the same interests although we've got six years between us we like to go to the gym we like to go to concerts we like to um have meals out and things and watch films so things like that and um, i'm very close with my grandmother as well so that's something i guess you could say a hobby i don't know um interests outside of that i don't know i like spending time trying to trying to make myself um what's the word i like trying to spend i like spending time trying to find a way to disprove myself so i'll be like you know carbs are quicker energy than fat i'll look at the biochemical pathway and see why that isn't true um and i've been doing that for a long time that's how i got to the point where i am now where i can sort of say you know when it comes to nutrition anyway so i guess that is in the sort of health fitness range maybe but um you know that's a good question outside of that i like to collect teddies and things um this is you can probably can't see, this is deborah like a ladybird quite nice and this is this is um little guy so my i had a puppy called um guy but we had to sell him unfortunately recently because we couldn't look after him anymore especially my back and my mum's hips and things so sophie bought me this which is quite a cute little like, doll or teddy yeah, I like to collect those sort of teddies as well. That's one of my other interests, funny enough. <laughs> um, with regards to the food festival, I'm of the same opinion, but it would be great to see you there. Yeah, Carl, are you from the Bristol area? Um, I'm from, the, well, between Bournemouth and Woking, that, that's kind of my two de designation, designated areas. Um, it would be really good to see you there. Um, you'll spot me straight away because I usually stick out in these places. I look a bit weird, but yeah it'd be good to see you there um connect with me on social media if you like as well my stuff usually is there and i probably already have you on this stuff but just send me a message close to the time and ask me if you're wanting to meet up or anything what are your thoughts supplementing d3 i live in a northern climate and don't get a lot of sun this time of year um i think it's useful probably on the low end maybe four thousand units throughout the year um well especially the summer months, it might be that six or nine months of the year, you have 4,000 units of vitamin D3. Um, if you're someone that needs to bump that up a bit because you're prone to illness for some reason, you can probably go up to maybe eight or 10,000 units. Um, anytime you're going higher than that, I'd probably speak to a medical professional because you're going to the realms of, that is a bit much. Um, I know people that do these protocols and they seem to get benefit from it, but it's looking like my disclaimer saying, like, don't overdo it um your vitamins and your minerals they, they work in tandem a lot of times um you kind of need enough of each thing when i say enough i mean enough i don't mean a lot so yeah you, you know this stuff already but um i think it is probably beneficial and i don't see many people testing you know in the northern hemisphere at least in the you know the northern sort of areas of the globe you know testing out with perfect vitamin c d status so I think for you, it would be useful if you're not already doing it. Um, you can gain some vitamin D from the food you eat. There's some in eggs, some in mackerel, some in salmon. You know, there's quite a lot, lot in fish, actually. Um, 
if you're going to have vitamin D at any time of year, just get rid of this notification. Um, if we're looking at taking it around the time that the sun is in the sky, like at a fairly peak level, I recommend to most people um, something like 11 a.m., maybe 12, 12 for some people, so that might be good. Um, the reason why is kind of emulates what you'd be getting naturally. So the peak sunlight would be the peak vitamin D you'd get throughout the day if you're out in the sun. So try and match that if you can. I think that's probably the best way to do it. Um, and have it with a fatty meal. That's critical. I'm feeling excess first now. Might be it. Might it be from the taurine? I just took two grams for the first time. When I was taking glycin, I felt more thirsty too. Hmm. Maybe. It could be that you had too much either subcutaneous or um, intracellular water as it was. That makes sense. Like you could have had some inflammatory water, if that makes sense. So um, that it could be regulating it in that regard. Um, I noticed actually the same thing. I don't think it happens to anyone else, but when I use creatine monohydrate, so that's a sports performance kind of supplement, um, I get quite thirsty, but I urinate a lot. Like, it's absurd. Like, the amount I take in versus the amount that comes out is ridiculous. So it might be one of those sort of things as well. But yeah, if it gets to the point where it's ridic ridiculous first, I'll probably just um, reduce the dose by one gram and see how I get them from there. But you could always just do one gram in the morning, one gram at night or something. That might be useful. Um, you know, don't do what I'm doing with high doses, you know. Ultimately, you do get taurine from the food you eat, um, assuming, which I, I, I imagine you are eating a proper diet. So, you know, if you're doing one gram, you find it useful, stick to that. Some people use tremendous amounts, but um, I don't know if they need it. So, yeah, just see how you go on and titrate it up and down slowly and carefully to get the desired outcomes. I'm from South Wales. You'll miss me. I'm only five foot and a fart. <laughs> Fair enough. Um, South Wales. Yeah, I used to study at Bath Spa, so I'm quite familiar with like South Wales, Bristol area. So yeah, it's not too far off you. Thank God. Um, for me, it's probably, I think we're looking at about two and a half hours by, by car. Hello, Sheen. Nice to see you. How you doing? Thank you for stopping by. If you've got any questions, Sheena, just ask in the chat. Yeah, I spent quite a few hours making this today, believe it or not. Uh, all these like faffing around things are just an extra. Really. I don't think they really add much to my content, but I don't know. I, I quite like the... Being one of the only people that is a carnival that you know openly makes YouTube videos and is somewhat active on social media, I think I've got to kind of represent the, the English, British kind of side of things. Um, so I've gone quite old school here with the culture and tried to stay stay quite I'm not sure the word is me like traditional but yeah that's kind of what I've done uh, I'm going to wrap this up in a bit unless anyone's got any more questions thank you Sheena I appreciate that yeah yeah so I'm using StreamYard as you'll see up here somewhere um I've looked at these other things like Streamlabs, and I didn't find much luck with it. Like my computer, you weren't here earlier, Shane, but my computer completely froze, and I had to like reset it, which really annoyed me. Uh, when I've used Streamlabs, it does even worse stuff than that, so it's a bit risky. But I like this one because I can see all the stuff there. I can press the button, it comes up on the screen, and I'm set. So it works really well for me. Um, but yeah. I live in Hungary. I remember now, actually. Yeah, you did say, sorry. I don't take vitamin D, but I eat cod liver, fish, and oyster, and I just check my level, and it's still great. I spend a lot of time in the sun sometime. That completely makes sense. That's fine. Yeah, you, you wouldn't need it. Um, Hungary is probably a better climate than it is here in the UK, I imagine. Um, cod liver is going to have vitamin D. Fish, oyster going to have vitamin D. Makes complete sense. Um, vitamin D is, of course, as you probably know, a stored vitamin. Um, so you, it's not something you add every day and you have to have every day. It's something which you, your cells will uptake. And, and, um, especially in the summer months when you get more sun, you'll, you'll store more and more and more. I guess this, 
to peak sort of time that it goes down, down, down is the sunlight exposure gets down, gets lower, less. So yeah. My pleasure, Carl. If you've got any more questions about training or anything, I'm happy to stay on here for quite a bit longer. Um, I'm not in a rush tonight to do anything or get anywhere, so I'd be happy to just stay here and chat about training or diet or stuff. Or what it's like to be a carnivore in England. You know, well, you're from Wales, Wales but you know the um, the issues we have by like eating out and stuff. Cheers, Jerome. Yeah, I think I need to re. I need I need to read the muscle mechanics stuff again. My explanation explanation earlier of um, hyperplasia was terrible. Like I can picture it, but I can't explain it, which is rubbish. Quite embarrassing. What do you think about melatonin supplementation? Not so much for sleep as for its and antioxidant properties. Um, I've got melatonin, but I think for me and a few other people I've spoken to, when I take it, it seems to ruin my sleep. Like it gets worse. I'm not sure why. Um, all I can think is that there's a negative feedback loop there somewhere. This is speculation. Um, and it means that if I put too much in the system, like in a tank, my body says, no, you're not taking any of this. Then just deals with it and I can't sleep very well. Um, I I know there's been studies on the toxicity of it and it's not a very toxic sort of thing, like in that sort of way. But um, yeah, the antioxidant it is, a, is a very potent antioxidant. I think the best way to go about it is to maximize the light exposure stuff that you're already doing. So the the early morning sunlight hours that you're getting, maybe the midday sun as well, get the max, maximum UV exposure. Then before bed, maybe I think from my reading, it's about three hours before bed. You do the red light therapies, you do the, the blue blocking glasses, you turn the screens down. Um, there's things as well that you can download, what was it, add to your computer. There's anti-flicker software. Um, one piece of software that I know about is called Iris. Um, basically, it means that you it's not stressful for your eyes and your brain to deal with the light, because when we're looking at lights, they are flickering all the time. They're not always on. We think they are, but they're not. They, they run on that sort of um, frequency. They're in different frequencies, so that's something to look into as well. But I think if you maximize your light exposure um you live a sensible lifestyle which i'm sure you are then you probably won't need melatonin i think it's one of those like you know add-on sort of things that might not do a lot for you um especially as you know you, you're someone that's self-conscious i've i've seen you sort of speak before so yeah you are probably doing everything right and you probably don't need it that's my that's my guess your explanation of hyperplasia was fine a lot but i'm always a fan of reading yeah yeah, it's quite shocking, isn't it? Like, this is going back to national diploma in sport that I did in, um, God, 2000 and, I'm trying to think now, 2011 or something, maybe, I don't know. Um, yeah, it's going back a bit. Like most, most, of, most of what I know from bodybuilding, like training, like the physical exercise side of it, is through um, a, a two-year course on sports science, um and a lot of reading that i've been doing years past i kind of feel like i know enough now about training to kind of like give someone a program and tell them how to do it but i kind of get how it works without really explaining the science side of it um so that's kind of where i stand on it i think that people can gain a lot from understanding the science as well so i'm not against that at all because it kind of gives you that sort of um reasoning gives you like a confirmation bias sort of thing in a way. So you like, you wait, okay, in a study, this is how you do this to produce this outcome. That's very helpful because it means that you're going the right direction, I find. Uh, but as we know, Jerome, finding the right science is, a, is an issue in itself. Um, so we are ultimately trying to build our bodies with the information that we, we gain, whatever sort of a media outlet that is, and try and build upon our bodies that way. Um, if you've got any more questions, please just ask. I'll probably stay here for about 10 more minutes. Um, feel free to ask whatever you like. It's been quite quiet today, surprisingly, because we do have currently 15 people in the live chat, which is um, a fair amount. To be fair. I know a lot of my subscribers are quite... I, I call them silent witnesses, so 
they like my stuff and they're always frequently like when commenting or participating in that sort of way liking um but they're not sure what to ask and they just want to hear what i've got to say about different things which is um hum hum quite makes it quite humble to be honest um people actually care what i've got to say but you know i do, I do appreciate everyone coming on to watch i went to college i spoke too soon i've lost three people <laughs> I went to college for kinesiology, but in my opinion, I learned far more reading independently. You're 100% right about finding quality source of information. Yeah, cheers. I think I think if we can find a good, like someone like Bart K or something to listen, you know, if we listen to someone like that, they'll explain it and make sense to people like us that, you know, kind of understand science to some, some extent. Um, you know, we're just, trying, we're just two gym bros trying to build a lot of muscle, so... I think you get it. I live in Greece, but in winter, I actually no sun exposure. Interesting. Yeah, I always wondered about Greece because I know you guys had quite a tough time with the last few years with all that's happened. Um, so yeah, I hope, I hope you guys are all right. I know it's been quite quite challenging to live in areas like that. Um, it might not be for you, but I know for a lot of people it's been quite rough. So hope you're well and. Um, my nan actually lived in Cyprus for over 25, 26 years. Um, that's uh, the, the Greek side. So quite familiar with Greek culture and very nice people. Probably some of the nicest people I've met in terms of like, you know, the, the average nationality. Great healthcare system from what I've heard as well. So, yeah. I lived in London for three years. Around that time, I was a vegetarian. Oh, no, that is not good. <laughs> Since then, I moved home and became a carnival. I lo love the kid, but unfortunately, didn't explore the carnival side of it. There's not a lot here, really. Um, there's very few of us here. Like, I probably actively speak to maybe five people from this country that are carnivals. <laughs> you know, it's it's not um, it's it's denser than most places in the United States for like the land mass, but. It's just not very popular over here. There's a big, big, big vegetarian movement. Um, and yeah, it's it's tough living here in the way that you can't buy a big, I don't know, beef steak or something in a in a restaurant. Um, people in the States will say, oh, it's easy. You just, you just go to a restaurant and buy a steak. I'm like, no, the steaks are that big. It's rubbish. It's not going to feed me. I don't have to buy another steak to sort of feed me up. It's ridiculous. Um, and if you ask, ask a butter on the side or something, well, no, we don't have butter. We only have spread, margarine. So, yeah, that's that's what we deal with here. Um, so it's not it's not very accessible here, which is a bit unfortunate. But we, we don't deal with that much expense in terms of the meat. And our meat, um, actually, all of our animal foods are probably the best quality in the world. Um, based on our legislation and based on standards, that is definitely true. Um, Probably quite similar in a place in the EU as well, I imagine. So, yeah. i got to go. Have a wonderful night. Thank you, Jerome, for the questions today. Um, I appreciate that. I know you've probably spent a bit of time writing those questions because um, you said beforehand it would be useful to sort of fill me up with questions if I need them. So, yeah, you've helped me out a lot there today. We haven't had many questions, unfortunately, which is a shame, but I'm sure I'll get a lot tomorrow on Bart's live stream. So... For anyone in the chat that's still here, the 15 people that are still currently present, um, tomorrow I'll be on Bart K's live stream. Um, what time? I don't know. I think it'll be about 8 p.m. UK time. I might be wrong, but hopefully the computer doesn't cut out or have any issues. So, yeah, I'm hoping, hoping that turns out all right. Take care, Drew, and thanks for tuning in. Brilliant. Right, I'll probably stay here for about five more minutes if anyone has any questions. Thank you, Creaser. Great. Yeah, thank you. Um, it should be good tomorrow. I'm hoping there's a good turnout. I hope that Bart makes a nice thumbnail so I don't look too ridiculous in it. Usually on these... On these videos where I'm like the featured guest or whatever, they have a thumbnail of me and I'd be like on the screen, which looks ridiculous. <laughs> so yeah, it's gonna be quite funny. All the best, all the best, Carl. Nice to speak to you.
Thanks, Jonathan. Thank you. Yes, yeah, so my plan for tomorrow is um, probably have breakfast in the morning and go to the gym around about, I guess, like maybe 10 or 11 o'clock. Um, then I'm speaking to a fellow UK carnivore guy who's one of my closest friends online, um, a guy called James McDonald. But Sophie will know who he is. Imagine Jerome will as well, probably. He's probably he's not here, but um, so yeah, that would be good. And he's asking me about the carnivore diet um, in the UK. Maybe talk a bit about training, talk about the sciencey sort of stuff. So that'd be good. And hopefully, I'll be able to make some sense, which will be interesting if I if I can do that. I don't know, but um, that'll be around about lunchtime. And um, that won't be aired probably for a week or two. I'm guessing, but I've been quite blessed to have well to have been asked to be on his podcast as his first guest. So. I, I remember asking him the first time. He's probably one of the first, well, I think the third person to come on my channel, um, be interviewed and be humbly obliged. And yeah, we've we've got on since we met on um, Harry Sopanos' channel. Um, so yeah, it's been an, it's been a nice experience overall, like meeting different people from different countries and different areas of the UK and hearing what I have to say about things. Then probably the rest of the day, I'll just rest up watch a film maybe, um, probably catch up with loads of client stuff, which is quite normal for me. Um, for anyone that is unaware, um, I'm probably leaving open two more coaching spots at the moment for my carnival coaching sort of um, thing. And they'll still be the same price, but I, I'm going to focus more now on doing consultations if I can, just because coaching, I do enjoy it a lot. And I like working with the people I work with. They're very good nice people um but the law of attraction you try and be nice to people and then get it back it seems to have worked in my favor which is good but um yeah i think i like i want to cap it at the amount i have currently because not because i'm declining future business um i think that with my time i'm able to sort of help them better and if i can get enough testimonials and they like my services they're going to carry on you know um, subscribing and give me give me more business as time sort of builds up, which is great. Um, this is my only source of income, the the stuff above me. So yeah, that's what I do. Um, consultations as well; they're very affordable. Um, I think they're I'm trying to think now. I always forget they're seventeen British pounds for forty minutes and eleven British pounds twenty minutes. The reason why I don't do very long ones, like some people, is that clients won't take the information in at times um and you know just having a chat with people i find that i'm able to get through everyone's questions within about 40 minutes um especially if they're you know concise questions i can really help people out quite fast which i think is very useful um, and i get great feedback from my clients as well so yeah it's brilliant um outside of that i was actually looking at refining my knowledge a bit and perhaps doing some online courses at some point um nothing that I've not already learned, but these are more like top up courses because I think that my explanation earlier of hyperplasia was like the worst thing I've said online ever. I'm quite embarrassed by that, but <laughs> I think I sh I'll probably read it up later and it'll make, make sense to me. But yeah, that's that's what's going on at the moment. Um, outside of that, if you liked the background, let me know in the comments or in the chat right now. Um, if you hate it, let me know and I'll probably change it. But I'm just interested to see what it looked like. But you know, I'm dealing with the light issues at the moment with the green screen. It's making me all fuzzy, which is way out of my control. Um, unfortunately, here I'm dealing with one light, which is a harsh white light, which is in a funny angle because I can't get it on me properly. Uh, I have no idea why this is all flickering. I changed all the settings and nothing worked, but that's life in it. Right. Yeah, that's my aim. I, I really don't know how to. I'm completely lost. Um, I can't change the light because the light bulb. Why can't you change the light bulb? The light bulb is literally melted, soldered into the ceiling. I can't do anything about that. There's not something I'm really allowed to touch, which I probably shouldn't touch because I'd probably hurt myself. Um, I would not be trusted to do that sort of thing. Now, if it's a screw, a screw in light bulb, yeah, that would be fine. But that's the that's the death of me right now. Um, it drives me nuts. And it's a harsh light. It radiates a lot of heat. You can see like heat coming off it at the times. Um, 
be that's probably my biggest problem at the moment in terms of like video recording. Love the background, that's good to hear. Thank you, Sophie. If you've got any more questions, Sophie, um, just ask and I'll continue rambling. There's actually quite a few people that go back onto these live streams after I've recorded them um, and actually watch them and sit for every single hour long bit of it, whatever it is, and ask questions about it. So I always find that quite interesting because live streams are off the people, like the regular people that come on um, Ben, Carl, Pacello, Rick, Sophie, Jerome, like all the regular people, as big as you have. Um, so that, that's more to help, sort of help and advise those sort of people because it means I can access more people at once and answer a quick question they might have, which is um, I find very useful. I mean, I'd find it useful anyway. That's why I go into Bart's Q and A sometimes and ask him some questions. Not very often, so I find that my questions are a bit, um, bit awkward and a bit annoying. So he probably doesn't like asking my, answering my, but I do ask my questions to him. I'll ask my question to him on my, my own channel. Um, I record all that, so that's quite helpful. Um, you'll find any useful training stuff in those Q and A's um, with Bart on my channel, they're top notch. His information is solid, so watch those if you haven't already. Yeah, I can't change that. I cannot see you properly either because I'm wearing blue blocking glasses too. Yeah, it's weird. Yeah, the light thing drives me nuts. The worst thing about being a YouTuber kind of person, I won't call myself an influencer because I've not really influenced anyone yet. I've helped a lot of people, but I've not influenced the masses by any means or any stretch. Um, yeah, is the light. The worst bit is the light and the time you spend indoors. Um, I'm not really in a position to sort of do this outside. Wi-Fi connection, cold, windy. Um, well, cold, windy, and the what it, it, it's those three things really. It's um just horrendous. So, ideally, be doing that outside and with the sun, but not so much that it boils my laptop to a pulp. You know, sorry, one more question. What would you recommend for online courses as a carnival? Um, it depends where you're coming from. If you're someone that's just trying to learn more about the diet, a basic nutrition course would be useful and that's if your knowledge is like not much like my mum's level sort of thing not not a lot um if you're someone coming up from it like you know the basic stuff that everyone says like all the top doctors and the carnival diet say um perhaps look at biochemistry i think biochemistry is very useful that's something um that's actually what i've got sophie to do so sophie is currently undertaking a course that I've suggested her do. It's not the best course in the world and that's not going to cover everything she needs to know to be a really good coach sort of thing. But it'll cover enough that she can work her own way around things and get the information she, she needs. Um, you can probably ask her about that course if you want. Just ask her on social media or something. Um, outside of that, yeah, probably just a basic nutrition course, a biochemistry course. And... Something to do with physiology would be very useful, um, particularly pathophysiology. Um, anything that includes all three of those would be very useful. I think that's probably something you're going to be looking at. Um, ultimately, us trying the diet is usually to sort of put health problems into remission. So um, that's what a lot of people focus on. That's what I focus on when I'm doing my reading. Um, problem is the eye strain when I'm reading like stuff online. It isn't great. I tried to. Try to not work on computers all the time. Green suit onesie. Yeah, could you imagine? <laughs> could you imagine just my head popping out the top, just of a, like a green onesie? Like, yeah, God. I was actually wearing a green T-shirt earlier, and I saw that on the screen. I thought, well, better change that. Thank God I did. Um, yeah. I think the light is better at my house. The light at yours is very harsh at night because I have to turn the, the webcam on brightest possible light and it blinds me and it keeps me up all night um, Like because I didn't deal with light very well. Um, so the light is better as you can see me better and it didn't have all this fuzziness. But, yeah, you know, it's a it's, it's tricky really, isn't it? Like, I need to suss something out. I can't keep working in this little gap. 
because um, it just makes everything seem unprofessional and I want to help people and I'm only going to help people if people click on it and they like what they see and part of what you're, you're doing when you're trying to provide good content is making something people like what they see so that's one of my limitations here I think. David nice to see you i um, very pleased that you're here. I appreciate your insightful comments in the Big Fat Challenge. Thank you. You'll have to watch this live. I have to watch this live stream a bit later on. Cheers from Canada. My pleasure, David. If, if you are watching this and you're seeing it later and you've come to your, your point where you've read what you've said, and I'm answering it like I am now, um, leave a comment below this video or another video and just say, I have a question for your next live q and da, 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 da. I'd be happy to answer it. Um, what I usually do with those is people will either direct message me or get in touch with me somehow. I've got a question on this. Please answer in your next live q and I'll be more than happy to do that. Um, and those will always be asked at the first instance of the next live Q&A. Assuming I've seen it and I've read it and you know, I've responded. But <laughs> yeah, I'm glad you've enjoyed it. It's nice to see you. All right, I'm going to wrap this up now. I said I'd leave about 25 minutes and I didn't. So um, thanks very much. And see me tomorrow, perhaps, at Bart's live Q&A. I think that will be around about 8 p.m. UK time. Don't quote me on that, but I think that's usually the rough time, maybe 8.30 p.m. So that will be good. Um, try not to ask anything too controversial or difficult for me because that made me look really stupid. Um, other than that... Yeah, the next live Q&A for me, as in me and my own, will just be on Monday. Um, Sophie may join me. It depends what she's up to. Um, and yeah, I might do another one on Wednesday. I might do one on Sunday even. So put your bell notifications on. Um, make sure you don't miss anything. I am quite a frequent uploader, so I understand it's hard to keep up with my videos. But I'm trying to get a message out there as quickly as I can, to as many people as I can. Um, and I've got to make videos that just appeal to lots of different people to get them on here. So that's what I'm up to. I'll see you tomorrow. Thank you, Ben. Yeah, Rick, hopefully everything works out for you and you get um, your stuff sorted out. Thank you for coming on. I appreciate you coming on today with your questions. See you in the carnivore, carnivore space. Yes. Excellent. Thanks very much as well. I can't remember if I said, but thank you for being a member of my channel as well. So I appreciate that. Thank you. All right. Good night, everyone. And I'll see you very soon.